سیکٹری آف پنجاب پرونشل مسلم لیگ آن بہاف آف ڈاکٹر محمد اقبال دیز لیٹرز آر ویری امپارٹنٹ بیکاز دے ایکسپلین دی فرینڈلی اینڈ کوریل ریلیشن بٹوین ڈاکٹر محمد اقبال اینڈ قید اعظم محمد علی جدا اینڈ گیو اے کلیئر اینڈ ویوڈ پولیٹیکل سچویشن آف مسلم انڈیا آف دیٹ پیریڈ ان دیز لیٹرز ڈاکٹر محمد اقبال ڈسکسٹ the main issue of the country such as number one the social and economic condition of muslim masses number two the policy and organization of muslim league number three all india muslim league convention Number four, separate Muslim state and future of Islam in Asia. Muhammad Jangir Alam, B. People Kaluni, Faisalabad, 22 September 2001. لاہور تھرٹین اگست نائنٹین تھرٹی سیون مائی ڈیئر جنا ایس آئی رو ٹو یو یسٹر ڈے انتھوزیازم فار دی لیگ از ریپڈلی انکریزنگ ان دی پنجاب یو ویل بی گلیڈ ٹو ہیئر دیٹ without any initiative on the part of the Punjab Provincial Muslim League. About 20 branches of the League have already been established in different towns of the Punjab. I am convinced that if some of the office barriers of the Punjab Provincial Muslim League are able to make a tour of the province, they will be able not only to raise money but also to open the eyes of the general Muslim public in the Punjab to the situation which has fortunately develop itself on account of the Congress attitude toward the Muslim. Unfortunately, however, the Provincial League is very much handicapped by lack of funds for initial expenses of such a tour. Could you make us a contribution of at least rupees 1500 from the central funds. I have every hope that our men will be able to raise sufficient money which will enable us to return the amount borrowed from you. We should be much obliged if you could do so at your earliest convenience. You are sincerely Muhammad Iqbal. 25th June 1936 
my dear Mr. Dina, Shat Kandar Hayat left Lahore a day or two ago. I think he will meet you at Bombay and have a talk with you about certain matters of importance. Dartana saw me yesterday evening. He tells me that the Muslim members of the Unionist Party are prepared to make the following declaration that in all matter that in all matters specific to the Muslim community as an all Indian minority they will be bound by the decision of the League and will never make any pact with any non-Muslim group in the Provincial Assembly, provided the League Provincial makes the following declaration that those returned to the Provincial Assembly on the League ticket will cooperate with that party or group which has the largest number of Muslim. Please let me know all your earliest convenience what would you think of his proposal? Also, let me know the result of your talk with Sir Sikandar Hayat if you succeed in convincing him he may come to our side. Hoping you are well. Yours Sincerely, Mamun Iqbal. Lahore, 23rd August 1936. My dear Mr. Jinnah, I hope my letter reached you all right. There is some talk of an understanding between the Punjab Parliamentary Board and the Unionist Party. I should like to you to let me know what you think of such a compromise and to suggest condition for the same. I read in the papers that you have brought about a compromise between the Bengal Puja Party and the Parliamentary Board. I should like to know the terms and the conditions. Since the Puja party is non-communal like the Unionist UI compromise in Bengal may be helpful to you. Hoping you are well. You are sincerely Mahmoud Iqbal. Lahore, 
8 December 1936 Dear Mr. M. A. Jina Mr. Ram Sul tells me that he has written a detailed letter to you about the board affairs I certainly agree with him when he says that your presence in this province is absolutely essential at least a fortnight before the polling days you know people of this province thoroughly well and also that they are most undependable lot they are generally carried away by the excitement of the women and if so shokatli and mr kafatulla address them just on the eve of the election day i am sure they will all support you and your candidates otherwise they might do anything i therefore request you to visit us about the end of december 1936 and beginning of january 1937 so that a last effort may be made to break the forces of reaction in case you are unable to come i am afraid you will not have more than four or your followers in the coming assembly with kind regards your sincerely mohammed iqbal lahor 28th march 1937 confidential letter mr dear my dear mr jana I suppose you have read Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru address to the All India National Convention at that you fully realize the policy underlying it in so far as Indian Muslims are concerned I believe you are also aware that the new constitution has at least brought a unique opportunity to indian muslims for self organization in view of the future political development both in india and muslim asia while we are ready to cooperate with our progressive parties in the country we must not ignore the fact that the whole future of islam as a moral and political force in asia rests very largely on a complete organization of indian muslim i therefore suggest that an effective reply should be given to all india national convention you should immediately hold an indian muslim convention in delhi to which you should invite 
members of the new provincial assemblies as well as other prominent Muslim leaders. To this convention you must restate as early, as clearly and as strongly as possible the political objective of the Indian Muslim as the distinct political unit in the country. It is absolutely necessary to tell the world both inside and outside India that the economic problem is not the only problem in the country. From the Muslim point of view, the cultural problem is so of much greater consequences to most Indian Muslim. At any rate, it is not less important than the economic problem. If you could hold this convention, it would test the credentials of those Muslim legislators who have formed parties country contrary to the aim and aspirations of Indian Muslim. It would further make it clear to the Hindus that no political device, however suitable, can make the India Muslim lose sight of his cultural entity. I am coming to Delhi in a few days' time and hope to have a talk with you on this important matter. I shall be staying in the Avon Consulate. If you could spare a few moments, we should meet there. Please drop a line in reply to this letter as early as possible. You are sincerely Muhammad Iqbal Baradla. Please excuse me, I have got this letter written by a friend as my eyesight is getting bad. Lahore, 22nd April 1937 My dear Mr. Zina, I do not know whether my letter which I posted to you about two weeks ago ever reached to you. I posted it to your address at New Delhi and when I went to Delhi later I discovered that you had already left Delhi. In that letter I proposed that we should hold immediately an All India Muslim Convention here at Delhi and once more to restate the policy of Indian Muslim both to government and to Hindus. As the situation is becoming grave and the Muslim feeling in the Punjab is rapidly becoming pro-Congress for reasons which it is 
unnecessary to detail. I could request you to consider and decide the matter as early as possible. The session of the All India Muslim League is postponed till August and the situation demands an early restatement of the Muslim policy. If the convention is preceded by a tour of prominent Muslim leaders, the meeting of convention is sure to be a great success. Please drop a line in reply to this letter as early as possible. You are sincerely Mahmoud Nikbal Bar at law. Lahore, thus 10th May 1937. My dear Mr. Jina, thank you for your letter which reads me in due course. I am glad to tell you that the Pro League feeling is rapidly progressing in the Punjab and that the Punjab Muslim, including the Unionists, will give you their full support. I should like to know whether it would be possible for you to tour through North India and to spend a few days in each province visiting important town before All India Muslim League session at Meerut. I think it is necessary to make suitable changes in the constitution of the League with a few view to bring the League in closer touch with the masses which have so far taken no interest in the political activities of this upper middle class of the Muslim. It is the complaint of the average Muslim that our leaders think in terms of office only and the vacancies in various government departments generally go to the relations or friends of the union unionist that is why the average Muslim takes little interest in our political affairs. I personally believe this complaint to be genuine and hope that you will think out some suitable changes in the constitution of the League which will make the message <coughs> more helpful of the League and its activities. Please drop a line in reply. You are sincerely Muhammad Akbar. 28th May 1937 my dear Mr. Jinnah, 
Thank you so much for your letter which reads me in a due course. I am glad to hear that you will bear in mind what I wrote to you about the changes in the constitution and program of the League. I have no doubt that you fully realize the gravity of the situation as far as Muslim media is concerned. The League will have to finally decide whether it will remain a body representing the upper classes of India. Indian Muslim or Muslim masses who have so far with good reason taken no interest in it. Personally, I believe that a political organization which gives no promise of improving the lot of the average Muslim can attract our message. Under the new constitution, the higher post go to the sons of upper classes, the smaller one go to the friends or relatives of the ministers. In other matters, too, our political institutions have never thought of improving the lot of Muslim generally. The problem of bread is becoming more and more acute. The Muslim has begun to feel that he has been going down and down during the last 200 years. Ordinarily, he believes that his poverty is due to Hindu money lending or capitalism. The perception that it is equally due to foreign rule has not yet fully come to him. But it is bound to come. The aesthetic socialism of Joel Lal is not likely to receive much more response from the Muslim. The question therefore is how is it possible to solve the problem of Muslim poverty?